Welcome back to episode three in the series. I've got five more drugs I want to discuss, and they are codeine sulfate, phenobarbital, potassium pentagrate, sulfadiazine, and sulfazole. But before I get started, I want to thank all of you for all the tips and support on my last long form video and in my short form content. Also, big disclaimer, I am not a licensed doctor. This is for historical purposes only, and I do not f affiliate with the Nazi party. Thank you. Anyways, on to the video. Starting off the trilogy, we have codeine sulfate, which is similar to elixir of turpin hydrate with codeine, due to the codeine, but that's probably a given. Anyways, it's an opioid-based pain reliever that'd be in tablet form, but the drug is much weaker than morphine. Battalion A stations would be issued 500 tablets. For context, these are medical departments attached to units, for example, the 5th Ranger Medical Detachment. Also, evacuation and general hospitals would be issued more, for obvious reasons, that being more patients. Now, coating sulfate as a drug is used for pain relief, as previously stated, and is a cough suppressant. It works by using a small amount of codeine and your body converts it into morphine. How it's done isn't no, but we do know the product. Someone needs to make an after action put on that one. I'm sorry, I'll leave now. Continuing on, codeine increases pain tolerance, but the pain can still be apparent in your patient. Codeine also causes sedation, drowsiness, and slows breathing. Some side effects are lightheadedness, vomiting, nausea, and other symptoms of that nature and a similarity to morphine could be slowing down the heart rate. Serious side effects are severe low blood pressure, risk of fatal overdose, and codeine is addictive. Next we have phenobarbital. Phenobarbital was first used as a barbiturate drug in 1912 and became one of the most widely used with its sibling sodium amytal. Phenobarbital was synthesized in 1911 by Horline. Some background knowledge about Horline. In 1943, Horline joined the Nazi party and later did medical experiments on prisoners he purchased. But some Nazi legislation he protested like banning of the experimentation on animals before he could purchase prisoners and was able to partially lift the ban on them. Horline is sort of a gray zone character within the Nazi party. Not super good, but still sinister for testing on humans. Let's call him really, really dark gray. I'll discuss some more in a later video. Anyways, back on topic. Phenobarbital was first deployed in therapy as a hypnotic for the first time in 1912 by Lowe, Julius Berger, and Impens. In that same year, it was commercialized by F. Bayer and Company under the name Luminal. Phenobarbital is a sedative used in many applications. One way it can be used is to control seizures, including generalized and partial seizures. It helps stabilize brain activity, reducing the amount and severity of seizures. A second way it can be used is a short-term sedative that will patients sleep or relax, particularly before surgical procedures, at least in the modern day. I'm not too sure this drug was used for that in the 1940s, but there was a drug called ether that I know was used for that. Anyways, back on topic. It also shares a similar job with mental health with sodium amytal, but less potent. It was used for severe anxiety. And from a modern point of view, there are some negative side effects, like drowsiness, dizziness, and a hangover or loopy affliction the next day. Plus, the drug has a history of substance abuse, liver disease, and respiratory issues. Next up is potassium pentagrade. Potassium pentagrade during World War II would be issued in tablet form and would come in 100 tablet bottles. The medical chest would have 300 tablets total. Here's a quick background check for potassium pentagrade. It was first made in the 1600s and it became a common drug in the 1800s. During World War I, Canadian soldiers were given potassium pentagrade in an attempt to prevent sexually transmission infections, or STIs, resulting in violet stained nether regions, but my guess it's not in a tablet form. The medical uses for pass and pentagrade are the for foot fungus, I will not show you this, uh, phentamungus, I probably butchered that, <laughs> superficial wounds, eskima, and jungle rot. You can look that up on your own discretion, <laughs> it's, it's gross. When taking my mouth raw, it is toxic. But the British Academy of Dermatology recommends diluting the potassium pentagrade with warm water. 
Once the chemical is dissolved completely, it should be a light pink color. Again, I do want to state that I am not a doctor. Now, second to last, we have sulfadizine, or wound tablets. Now, wound tablets will be taken through the mouth to disinfect wounds and slow bacteria from spreading, otherwise known as an antibiotic. This drug was ubiquitous with medics during the Second World War. This drug was often switched out with sulfaminified, or the same drug that sulfur powder is, but the only difference is in the packaging and the way that it's used. With sulfadizine, there would be 8 tablets, but with sulfaminified, there'd be 12. But when taking this drug by mouth, Training films say to drink as much water as possible. And wound tablets cannot be taken if you are hit in the gut. Here's a short segment from said training film. Don't forget the wound tablets and wash them down with plenty of water. Sulfadizine was the most widely used for infectious diseases. But there are some side effects like nausea, loss of appetite, dizziness, rash, and fever. This drug is not effective against colds, the flu, and other viral infections. Finally, our last drug in this episode is sulfazole. Another member of the sulfa family, sulfazole was primarily used for gonorrhea and can be used for UTIs, Respiratory infections, think bronchiolitis and pneumonia, a preventative for infectious burns, and a veterinary clinics. Though I don't know how vets would use this drug. If there is any vets in the comments, let us know. Something else I also discovered while researching this drug is that modern manufacturing practices for drugs were created because of an accident that began in 1940, when the Winstrop Chemical Factory of New York put sulfazole tablets contaminated with phenobarbital on the market resulting in hundreds of related deaths and injuries, and starting an investigation on, into the issue by the FDA, which was founded in 1906. The FDA's efforts were in retrieving the Wintrap drug remaining on the market. While collecting the drug, the FDA revealed numerous control deficiencies in the plant and serious inconsistencies in the firm's attempts to recall the tablets. This prompted the FDA to require detailed controls in the production of sulfazole at the Wintrop factory and throughout the industry as a whole. Thanks for watching this video all the way through. I have been seeing your comments as of recently on my latest long form video and I would like to thank all of you for the support you are showing me. This channel would not be possible without all of you supporting it. Have a great rest of your day.